Good morning. It's Friday. I am at home. I feel the cool air or the cool breezes of fall is amongst us. Right here in the oven, the oven of the Memphis, Tennessee, Mid-South area where we like to broil things in the unbelievable heat and the unbelievable humidity. Just say, I can almost smell fall. Do you know, here's a couple things that means. Number one, we won't die getting in the car. Number two, football. Number three, and this is in no particular order. Number three, long sleeve t-shirts and football. Did I mention football? Welcome to Pray First, everybody. A conversation we have Monday through Friday right here at the Pastor Doug page. I want to thank you all for being here. It is so good to be here on Friday. I do have Fridays off. I take what's known as a Sabbath. Some of you may have heard the word Sabbath referred to as Sunday. Sabbath was never Sunday. Sabbath was Saturday. But things change. The point is you give God the first. You give God your time you give God you take a day and build margin into your life where you rest and so that's what I do on Friday I don't do any work on Friday na 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 so hey everybody welcome our first time guests hit some hearts hit some likes go crazy on those hashtag LSP just kidding but that is liked or live shared what's P I can't remember P you're going to have to tell us what P is. I forgot what that is. Anyway, hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Um, man, I'm so excited I can't stand it. Have you ever known someone who was an incredible liar? I want you to hashtag some yep yeps. I'm talking about, man, th there's different categories of liars. There's a li the liar who, when, every time you hear them, you know they're lying. And then there's the liar who lies all the time and you don't know they're lying. And then there's the liars that tell a little bit of truth, a little bit of lie. And so it's called deception. That's what the, the enemy does. The enemy will take a little bit of the truth, a little bit of lie, and deceive you, which is, in fact, still lying. And have you ever known someone who was a good, bad liar? They were good at lying but they were bad at it. Let me do that or not. They were good at lying, but they were bad at it. So what I mean by good at lying, but bad at it, initially the lie is great, but over time they forget to lie. And so it starts exposing things. It starts exposing little mistruths and untruths. And, and so you really don't know when they're telling the truth. Let's talk about that today. We want to go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 and 7, where God introduces himself to Moses, and he's introducing himself, his, himself to the children of Israel, and he's proclaiming some things about himself and about life and about things in general, where he would have an opportunity to, you know, Maybe make himself look better than he really is. Because that's really kind of what lies are for. Lies are to convince people of something that is not true. Generally, to make someone look better than they are. Or to cover up a responsibility or a mishap or, or you know, something that they did that was wrong or bad or mischievous. So, God's had several thousand years to do that and, you know, eternity and... He has spoken a lot. I want you to know that God has spoken a lot. God has said a lot of things. And the thing about lying is, is over time, you forget to lie. Remember we just said, you know, you know people who lie, but then they forget to lie. Let's read Exodus 34, 6 and 7. And the Lord passed, and the Lord passed before Moses and proclaimed, I am the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, hashtag merciful, and gracious, hashtag gracious, long-suffering, hashtag long-suffering, and abounding in goodness, hashtag goodness. These are the ones we've talked about so far. We've talked about that God is gracious. 
He is full of grace. He is long-suffering. He is willing to be patient and wait on us and not get angry at us and not give up on us. And all God's people said, amen. Abounding. Come on. Abounding in goodness. God doesn't have goodness. He is goodness. Therefore, he can't lose goodness. If you haven't heard the pray first about gracious, merciful, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness, you need to go back and watch the past four days on the Pastor Doug page. Did you know that you can go back to my page, click on videos, and watch these things? And some of us need to watch them again. I'll go back and watch them again. You can go back and watch them again. God, man, doesn't have goodness. He is goodness. All right, so here's the one we're talking about today. And the Lord passed by Moses and proclaimed, I am the Lord, the Lord God. I am merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abounding in truth, keeping mercy for a thousand generation, generations. In other words, keeping mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity upon the fathers and the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. So that's why we have to get the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus to cleanse our iniquity and break generational curses. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about abounding in truth. So hashtag truth. He says, I'm abounding in goodness and I'm abounding in truth. That's Exodus 34 verse 6. God never lies. God never lies. God never lies. God never deceives. God never breaks promises. God never misrepresents himself. You've heard me say that people misrepresent God. God never misrepresents himself. He never lies. He never deceives. He never breaks promises. He never misrepresents himself. God not only tells the truth, God is the truth. And there have been thousands of years for God's words that are written down to have been uh, disproven or to be found faulty or to be found untrue. But what we have discovered through scientific, historic, and archaeological evidence time and time again in the night is as early and recently as the 1940s the 1950s and the night and the 2019s you know just recently in April another biblically uh, addressed city was uncovered and its ruins are once again proving the timelines the governments the characters, the people of the Bible. You need, you need to look that up. I mean, rare ancient uh, treasures bearing biblical names have been discovered as early, as late as, I guess I should say, a April of this year. Bearing the name and the, the household inscriptions of uh, the House of David and the cities of the Bible in 1947, the oldest scrolls known to exist were discovered in a cave. They're known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. This was in 1947. They are multiple thousand year old scrolls that show us that the text we have in 2019 is the same text they had a couple thousand years ago. So this idea that it just changes and has been modified and all these things, it keeps getting obliterated. There's a city that was unknown by archaeologists, was unknown uh, by geographers that is mentioned in the Bible. And I didn't bring that information today. We may talk about that Monday. But that city that was mentioned in the Bible was long disputed to have even been something. It probably was a made-up story in a made-up city, and maybe it was just one of those parable-like things where he just kind of makes something up. Well, as archaeologists were digging, they find that city. You see, you're not going to disprove God's Word. You're not going to find a kink in his giddy-up. You're not going to find that he has lied or that he has deceived or that he has misrepresented himself, or that he breaks a promise. The, the, the reason God can't break a promise is when he speaks, it happens. Come here, I know you and I live on this thing called the timeline, and you and I measure everything. And you and I measure things like years and 
decades and centuries and lifespans and things of that nature. And you go through stages. God is not restricted and defined by years and decades and centuries and stages. When God speaks, it exists. For example, if God were to say today, let there be a second sun, and he didn't mean for it to come on this afternoon, it would be true if it came on next week. Okay, so there are some things in your life that you're still waiting for. There's some things in your life that you believe God has promised you, and you think, well, maybe God, you know, deceived me, or maybe he told me a lie, but you real Christian folks, you know, you real spiritual folks, you say, well, I just didn't hear God right, and, you know, we can play anything off. It's kind of like, you know, hocus pocus, abracadabra, kind of like most of our faith. Now, when God speaks something, it, it exists, it happens. That's why he can't lie, and that's why it doesn't change, because God never changes. God don't just tell the truth. God is the truth. All right, so let's let's look at some scripture here. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Matthew 24, verse 35. And if you're wondering why I'm speaking a little bit, you know, less loud and such, I'm in my neighborhood, so I don't want to, you know, wake up everybody. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. In other words, the stuff he talks about will pass away. Uh, the governments, the the sun, the moon, the stars that he created, the earth, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never change. The word I spoke before is the word I speak now. The word I speak now is the word I'll speak in the future. God doesn't forget to lie because when he speaks, it happens. He can't lie. He, he, he doesn't tell the truth. He is the truth. You know, we tell the truth, but sometimes we tell lies. If we were God and we told a lie, it would become the truth. <laughs> okay, you say, what? Well, just think about it. If you were God and you said, okay, let's just let's, let's, let's build it a little bit bigger. Let's say you're, I don't know, you're a dog catcher. And you're ashamed that you're a dog catcher and there's nothing to be ashamed about that. There's, never be ashamed about work, period. But let's just say you're a dog catcher and you're a bad dog catcher and you're not a really good dog catcher and you're about to get fired from your dog catcher job. But you meet this hot little honey at the donut shop and uh, you say, yeah, baby, uh, back in medical school and I was you know, first in my class and now I'm a doctor over at the, you know, the Memphis Trauma Center and I have done some research at St. Jude and I'm really you know, doing all this stuff. Okay, so if you, that's, you're lying. <laughs> you're, you're, you're not even a good dog catcher. And you are talking to your hot honey. Well, somebody's hot honey because it ain't going to be your hot honey, you fire dog catcher. But you're, you're talking to this girl over here and you're telling her how, you know, you're this doctor and you've done this research. If you were God and you were saying those things, here's, here's God can't tell a lie. If you were God and you were saying those things, guess what? You would have just become a doctor who had just gone through medical school. You would have been first in your class and, and you had done studies at St. Jude. And you, you'd have that honey of it. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't, God can't lie. You know, I want you to go outside today and look up at the sky and say, let there be light. You know? And then go tell everybody at the office that you created the sun. You'd be lying. But when God shows up at the office and he says, you know what? I walked out one day and said, let there be light. That's the truth. God don't forget what he says, and he never breaks a promise to you. Okay, I need you, to, I need you to comprehend this. I know the little story, the little analogy was funny, silly, whatever, but it was packed with truth. God doesn't forget what he says. God never breaks a promise. He never misrepresents himself. He never deceives. He never lies. That means you need to know what God said. Because the liar, the father of lies, the enemy, Satan, will take the little bits of truth of God's word and twist them with a little bit of a lie and deceive, not people just far from God, but will deceive the children of God if you don't know the truth. Jesus says, my people will know the truth and the truth will set them free. The Holy Spirit will guide them into all truth. 
and remind them of what I said, remind them what Jesus said, and tell them of things to come. When you get barbershop, backroom, parking lot prophecies, and when you get, you know, uh, self-help sermons, and you're just so encouraging and just so good, and God's bringing you a miracle this week, and God's going to move in your life this week, and you're going to have a car, and God's going to give you, and, and it's going to be all right. You need to know the true promises of God before you start blaming God for the promises some false prophet gave you, okay? You need to know, did God say this? And not, was this a refrigerator hanger or a social media post or some kind of meme? Because we get disappointed in God because he didn't do what he didn't say he would do. And then we blame God and all these things. So I want you to know what God's word said. Not only is he abounding in truth, God is forgiving. And all God's people said, God is forgiving. God is always peace-seeking. God is always peace-seeking. Let's look at Psalm 103, 12 through 14. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we were made from dust. How does he remember that? He was there. How does he know we're weak? He came and became one of us. He was tempted in every way, yet he didn't sin. We do not have a father. We do not have a high priest. We do not have a God who does not know us and who does not know not only the right and the wrong we do, but the why we do it. He knows our frame. He remembers that he made us out of dust. He carries our transgressions away. Our Father is abounding in truth, mercy, graciousness, long-suffering, goodness, and abounding in forgiveness. God is always seeking peace, seeking forgiveness, willing to forgive, even the worst situations and the worst circumstances, and keeps no record of your wrongdoing so he can bring Bring it up later. Uh, uh, uh. And for those of you who thinks that, you know, he's, he, God forgets. No. God's omniscient. God knows everything. If God forgot all the bad things we did, he wouldn't know us very well because he wouldn't remember what all we've done. Amen? 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 He would have forgot about the teen years. He would have forgot about the college years. He would have forgot about the first marriage years. He would have forgot about, you know, the alcoholic years. He would have forgot about the, uh, you know, God don't forget. God ain't up there like, what are they talking about, Holy Spirit? Hey, Jesus, they mentioned something. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. uh He's omniscient. He knows everything. This is what makes God so merciful and gracious and long-suffering and kind and abounding in goodness and abounding in truth and abounding in forget in forgivingness, forgive for forgiving or forgiveness it's easy for me to say it's because he chooses not to use it against you no double jeopardy for those who are found in Christ Jesus Jesus has already taken the punishment Jesus has already been condemned Jesus has already had judgment passed against him on behalf of you you can't be tried again or the crimes you committed or that you will commit because Jesus was pronounced guilty for you. And that's why scripture says there is therefore now no condemnation. That is a legal term. There is no guilt for those of you who are found in him. So whatever you think you've done, you feel so unworthy or you're doing right now or you plan on doing tomorrow, there is no condemnation found in Christ Jesus because he is forgiving. Now, Somebody's getting, I gotta, I gotta pray for you, but somebody's getting on Peter's nerves, and Peter goes to Jesus, and probably, it's probably John, because John was this little, hey, this Jesus boy right there, he's there, John, the, the beloved one. So he's probably getting on Peter's nerve, and what John don't know is Peter had cut his ear off. 
And he goes to Jesus and says, before, you know, I'm just kind of paraphrasing, before I cut John's ear off, and I don't know if that's who he was upset with, before I cut John's ear off, because I'm going to cut John's ear off, kind of like him little dogs yesterday. I like them little dogs, by the way. No dog was injured yesterday in the filming of Pray First. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go back on my page. He goes to Jesus and Jesus, how many times should I forgive somebody? And I'm sure he didn't mention John's name. Jesus knew who he's talking about. He said seven times, right? Because I think John was probably on six. And at number seven, dude's ear was going down. And Jesus said, whoa, wait a minute. Not seven times. Come on. You know better, Peter. Come on. Don't make me say what I know. Don't make me write in the sand. It's seven times 70 you'll forgive somebody. And so you probably went home and did the math. 70 times 7 and got you a number. Well, that's the wrong number. 70 times 7 means 70 times 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 70. That's a big, big number. So I want you to understand that God is merciful. God is gracious. God is long-suffering. God is abounding in goodness. God is abounding in truth. God is abounding in forgiveness. And he loves you. He, that God, who's bigger than us, loves you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person here. 70 times 70. Yes, yeah, a big number. I pray for every person here. God, I pray for just a supernatural revelation of who you are. Lord, that we quit being so hard on ourselves and, and return that grace to others that has been given to us. The free grace that has been given to us. The undeserved mercy and kindness and graciousness and long-suffering and goodness and truth and forgiveness. Father, that's why you require that from us because that's what you've given to us. Lord, give us the power through your Holy Spirit to love. Help our love today. Father, help our love today. God, we like Peter so many times are looking for number seven so we can break it off in somebody. Thank God you didn't do that to us. Thank God you don't do that to us. And as followers of Christ, we're going to follow your teachings. We're going to adhere to your principles as disciples. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. I love you guys so much. Bye, guys. See y'all later. Have a good weekend. Hit some hearts, hit some likes, hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag shared. Get this out on your pages. You reached, I don't know how many thousand people this week. That was all you guys. It's impossible for me to do that. I love y'all. Be careful this weekend. Stay cool. Fall is coming. I ought to get on them, one of them bikes today. Hey, check out that cornhole. Oh my gosh. My friend built me those. I'm probably not going to get on that bike. I'm probably going to get on my couch. Wouldn't want to break the Sabbath. <laughs> Love y'all. Bye.